just focusing thought, it's focusing emotion. It's thinking for the purpose of the emotional response to your thought. That's really what you're about. Thinking with attention to the emotional response to your thought. So for a while now, do you know about focus wheels? We were teaching a focus wheel as a way to help you take a thought that you felt pretty good about and then sort of round up other thoughts that supported it. That was the purpose of the focus wheel. So, so recently, as Esther's been doing focus wheels, where she used to do focus wheels in order to improve a thought that wasn't feeling very good, now she uses focus wheels just to improve or increase the momentum of an already good feeling thought. So Esther's focus wheels these days are only about things that are already really easy to feel good about. And she writes it right in the middle. I feel so good about, and she'll put dot, 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 and then she writes all the things she feels good about. And just goes around and around and around and around and around until she focuses on, on what already feels good, until she gets that momentum of what feels good going. And do you know a momentum of what feels good going? You know what it does to the things that you've been worried about? It blows them off the track. In other words, they can't both be active at the same time. So it's focusing deliberately for an improvement in the way you feel. Let's say you feel satisfied about something. You're just feeling sort of peaceful and good about something. So you just focus on it. Well, if you stay focused upon this for a while, let's say you're making a list of the things that you feel good about, what will happen is that feeling of peaceful and calm and satisfied feeling good will start to feel like eagerness, it will start to feel like enthusiasm. You'll begin to feel passion about it. You'll feel happier and more excited about it. So that's a already positive thought that has little or no resistance now gaining enough momentum that it has true power. You kind of get the sense of this? That's where most of you are at these days. You know the difference between something that feels good and something that doesn't feel good. And we want you to know that the things that don't feel good, it's not about the lover that left you. It's not about the job you didn't get. It's not about the money you don't have. It's not about the condition you think you're living. The negative emotion that you feel is always, always, always because you're focused upon this in a way that your inner being is not. And so you have, by your attention to this and by your attitude and choice of, of the way you're looking at it, you have caused separation between you and your inner being and that's what you're suffering over. You're not suffering over the loss of money or the loss of a lover or the loss of anything. You're suffering over the pinching off of the resources that feel so good when they are there. And for those like you, the more that you are allowing, deliberately allowing connection to who you are, the more you can't bear it when you are not in full connection. Making lists of positive aspects, writing pages of things that you feel good about is helpful. And we say it's only helpful if you're feeling good when you are making the list. If you wake up and you're ornery and you say, I need to write some positive aspects about some things. Well, every subject is two subjects. So every time you write what you think is a positive aspect, what you really do is activate either the absence of it or a negative aspect. The momentum has to be moving in the direction of feeling good before you turn on the gas.